In this video on programming next steps, we have a look at subroutines, interfaces and parameters. So a subroutine is a block of code given a unique, identifiable name within a program. We use subroutines to break down a larger problem into a series of smaller, more manageable problems, making them easier to code, debug and reuse. Depending on the course, the textbook or the programming paradigm you're using, subroutines are often referred to interchangeably by many different names, such as subroutines, modules, procedures, functions, methods and subprograms. The most common way to think of subroutines is as either a procedure or a function. Understanding the difference between the two types is really important. A procedure is a block of code that takes in 0, 1 or more parameters and performs a set task. A function, on the other hand, is a block of code that takes in 0, 1 or more parameters, performs a set task and returns a value. In object-oriented programming, subroutines are referred to as methods but you can still broadly think of them as procedures and functions. We'll look at object-oriented programming in more detail in SLR3. So let's inspect a piece of pseudocode here so we can fully understand what subroutines are. We can see there are four subroutines in this program and they're all procedures. Each one is identified by the word procedure followed by a name. So we have initialize, output one, output two, and adjust as our four procedures. And you can see where they end with the word end procedure. Our main program actually starts at the end after the comment main program starts here. We can see the very first line of code which is run is a call to the initialize procedure. So as soon as we hit that call, the program jumps off and starts running the code from the procedure initialize. The program carries through until it hits end procedure where it jumps back to the main program and carries on where it left off. We can see how it then jumps off to output one, output two and adjust. And each time it would fire off to the separate procedures, execute the procedure then come back. So we mentioned there are two main types of subroutine, procedures which carry out a task and provide structure to a code, and functions which carry out a task and return a value. Now we're looking at a language specific example here as opposed to pseudocode, so we're now working in Python. In this program, the code starts at the bottom of the code listing. It then calls output throw, so the program jumps and executes the code from here. When the program reaches its end, it returns a value, making the subprogram output throw a function. The output throw function also calls another subprogram, roller dice. Roller dice returns a random number from 1 to 6, making it another function. The output throw function also calls yet another subprogram, order dice. As we can see, order dice returns the values of the dice with the largest first, making it yet another function. So what are the advantages of using subroutines like this? Well, programs become easier to write and they become easier to debug. It helps us to create reusable program components. And functions together can be grouped into libraries for easy reuse across other programs. For example, import random imports the random library of functions into our program so we can then make use of them. And finally, programs are easier to test. 
So here's an example of a C sharp function that returns the square root of a number supplied by a user. You can see we're calling the square root function SQRT, which is part of the C sharp math library. We're supplying the function with one parameter value in the form of an integer, in this case, 10. The value 10 would enter the function and the code inside will perform the square root calculation. The result would then be returned from the function. Note that the part of the program that calls the function must have somewhere for the value to return to. Here it's been returned and assigned to the variable x. The return value from a function does not need to be assigned to a variable provided it returns somewhere valid. So here we're using console.writeLine, available in languages such as Visual Basic and C Sharp, to output text to a console. You might typically use it to output a literal string such as follows, console.writeLine, hi. However, in this example, the parameter we're passing into the right line command is the function itself, math.sqrt, including its parameter num1. The function returns 6, which is output via the right line command. Often you'll want to pass values into a procedure or a function when you call it, like we just saw with the sqrt command from the math library. The first line of a subroutine specifies the interface for that subroutine. The interface will look different depending on the programming language you're using, but broadly speaking it outlines the name of the subroutine, the list of parameters it requires when you call it, the order that those parameters should be supplied in, and the data types for those parameters. If the subroutine interface is for a function, it also typically includes the data type of the return value. Here we see an example of a procedure in Visual Basic called deductions. The interface for this procedure specifies two parameters. Both are integers. The first parameter supplied will be stored in pay. The second parameter supplied will be stored in percent. Ignore the keywords by vowel. You don't need to understand that for the exam. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about that, you can check out the beyond the specification section at the end. When calling the procedure, we use its name and supply the number of parameters in brackets, ensuring you supply the correct number of parameters in the correct order and of the correct data type. Let's look at a slightly more complicated example, this time using a function with the return value. We have a function called total tax. It requires a single parameter called cost. The supplied value must be of the data type integer. And the return type will be of the data type double. The function total tax is called in the procedure main towards the bottom. When calling it, we pass in the single parameter it requires. Notice how the data type of the local variable sales price matches the data type that the function is expecting to receive. The value currently held in the local variable sales price that's 500, is copied into a new local variable, cost, and passed into total tax as part of the function call. The function then executes and finally returns a value. It returns a value when it hits the return keyword as shown here. It's also common to use the name of the function to return a value. In this case, the return line would read total tax, open parentheses, national tax plus city tax, close parentheses. Notice how the data type of the return value and the data type of the variable the return value ends up back in are the same. In this case, they are both double. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. 
Why is it a good idea to develop code in a modular way? What is the difference between a function and a procedure? How do you call a subroutine? What is meant by a subroutine interface? And what are parameters? That's everything you need to know for the exam. If you want to dive a little bit deeper into subroutines, then carry on watching this beyond the specification section. So when passing data into a subroutine, there are two methods you can use, passing by value and passing by reference. Some languages allow you to specify the way you pass data. Others determine it for you based on the type of data being passed. In other languages, such as Python, all values are passed by value. So let's look at passing parameters by value. When a parameter is passed by value, the value created for the subroutine being called is a copy of the original. Once it's passed in, the parameter is held in a separate memory location, and therefore it's only available to that subroutine. The copy is now a local variable of that subroutine. Here, the value 10 is assigned to the variable num at the start of the program and stored in memory address 00111. A copy of the content of num is passed to the procedure triple when it's called. The copy is stored in memory address 01000. Because this copy is local to its own procedure, the two variables can share the same name. They're separate variables existing in different places in memory. As we've passed by value, when num is multiplied by three inside the procedure triple, the value of the copied variable num is changed at memory address 01000. The value of the original num variable, held in memory address 00111, is unaffected. Now, when a parameter is passed by reference, a pointer that contains the memory address of the original variable is created. This now means that any change to that value from within the called subroutine will also affect the value of the original variable. So same as before, the value 10 is assigned to the variable num and stored in memory address 00111. This time, when triple is called, we pass the value of num by reference. The procedure triple receives a pointer, this time to the memory address of the variable num. The value passed in, 00111, is a pointer or reference to the location in memory of the original variable num. So when the procedure triple multiplies num by 3 inside its procedure, the value of the original variable num is updated in memory. If you've got that, let's just expose a little bit of truth to you. If you pass a local variable by reference and then assign to it, the result is a change to the caller's variable and not what it's pointing to. This type of implicit dependency is considered bad practice. Virtually all new languages pass by value. In modern languages, variables tend to be of reference types, where the actual object data is stored separately, and only reference to it are ever held in variables and passed as parameters. Passing such a reference is classed as passing by value, because the variable's value is technically the reference itself and not the reference object. The net effect on the program can be the same, as either passing by value or passing by reference.